Welcome back to LEGO Wars and Series 4's Round of 16. Last time out we saw the main series bracket mirror the international special this year as champions and favourites alike all crashed out leaving a mixed up but nonetheless exciting lineup. With one fight standing between our survivors and a place in the grand final let's remind ourselves of the robots left in the running. First, from Manchester, seeded number one and reigning champion, Agrawobber. The champs pulled out the best performance of their defence so far to incapacitate the 10th seeds and look finally on course to defend their title. From Hinkley in season number 7, 23 red. The 7th seeds pulled off one of their best displays last week in disposing the series 1 champs helping to cement their status as one of the favourites. From Cossie, Block Lobster. In their first round of 16 appearance, Block Lobster is one of two playing robots still in the running but with a rematch with 23 red on the cards they need the performance of their career to make the grand final. From Brighton, seeded number 22, Bricker Brother. Despite their round of 32 fight only lasting seconds, they picked up a lot of damage to the internal frame from Mr. Waffle, and it remains to be seen if that damage has been fixed well enough. From Didcot, seeded number 23, Kato Nemoidian. Another veteran making their first round of 16 appearance, Kato has started showing signs of battery issues that have plagued Xbox in the past and needs to be careful with their weapon usage tonight. From Telford, Diabolical Toothpick. After the disasters of last year, Diabolical Toothpick's luck has been incredible this year, but luck alone can only get you so far and we get to take a proper bite from that beak. From Portsmouth at season number 12, King Bee Cubed. Revenge was sweet for King Bee as they took out Kront last time out, but with the bracket as erratic as ever, the old lifter needs to be at their best to make next week's final. From Titusville, Florida, Kraken. With two champion scalps to their name, Kraken is really starting to take the series by storm, but with those chain issues still continuing to rear their head, they can't be too confident of a debut grand final appearance. From Coventry, Monsoon. The rookies were somewhat lackluster in their split JD win last week, and the further they progress, the more apparent those chain issues are becoming. From Seoul in South Korea, Orby Blade. With the demise of Sweepy, Orby is now the last horizontal left in the running and will be determined to emulate Jeff's example of a top 4 run. From Derby, Pegasus. After tossing Atlas aside for the second time, Pegasus are looking the strongest external bot running as they target the grand final. From Birmingham, Quantum. Our top ranked machines seem to be lacking the edge from their heats as they watch Mingo effectively hand them the win. Let's hope they're back up to full speed tonight. From East Harling in seeded number 17, Shatterstar. The 17th seed are the last retcon machine standing in the field, but with a growing list of high tier wins, this could be their year. From Dallas, Texas, Switchback. The playing winners secured their best win yet over the third seed in the last round and could pull off another shot tonight. From Mountain View, California in seed number 8, Tantrum. The Orange Machine shook off a stumble in the heat to dominate Tin last week, but with the top rank Quantum coming up, they need to protect their weapon chain to keep punching through. From Thousand Oaks, California, Whiplash. The Lifter triumphed over P1 in the last round, but with a ton of failed flips, I'm concerned about their batteries ahead of another flip off. We'll begin tonight where we left off last week in Quadrant 3 in an all BattleBots encounter between Monsoon and Orby Blade. This promises to be a destructive one, so let's see the panels fly. Robot is stand by. Three, two, one, activate. So two deadly spinners in this battle. By the end of it, only one will still be working. Orby Blade, the first to move the yellow machine there. Monsoon, the blue, with that terrifying vertical spinner of theirs. Orby Blade, oh, <laughs> I've done damage to the arena. Great, thanks for that one. We will be billing you for that, by the way, and trust me, it'll be expensive. These machines rank third, Orby, ranked 14th, Monsoon, but neither of them are actually seeded for the main competition. 
just shows you how well the two machines have done, especially Orbi being an unseeded newcomer and being ranked third in this tournament as they send a piece of Monsoon flying across the arena. I think it's one of the forks it was. Is Monsoon Spinner still spinning? It doesn't seem to be. That's been a reoccurring issue in this series of LEGO Wars. Yes, it's a middle level when it works, but when it's not working, well, what have they got? It's a machine that is all weapon and nothing else, really. They've got no pushing power, and once again, their weapon has let them down here, Monsoon, and that is a shame. We saw it fail on them against Sweepy in the last round, and they were lucky that Sweepy's weapon went first. They won a very, very close split judges' decision. Meanwhile, Orby Blade tore apart Megalodon in the last round, don't forget, proving why it's ranked third overall in this bracket. Pushing back against Monsoon now. See, there's no pushing power. Monsoon! Oh! And one of the side panels has been torn away. It is still hanging on by a thread, but only just. That's the kind of damage we expect to see from that weapon on Orby Blade. It is a frighteningly powerful horizontal spin. Oh! And another side panel has been torn away. And all of a sudden, Monsoon looking very, very fragile and very exposed out there in the centre of the LEGO Wars arena being pushed back once again by Orby Blade. They've got good pushing power on that machine as well as a ferocious weapon. They have designed it with their weapon going out in mind, which is good to see. Not a lot of machines do that in LEGO Wars. It's such a severe learning curve and something that a lot of machines and a lot of teams could learn from in the future of the competition. Monsoon being pushed back against the arena side wall. Going for the pivot. Oh, and Orby were very nearly caught out by it there. Now bringing that spinner in again. Monsoon standing idle. Has that shot taken out something important? I think it might have done because the machine is completely and utterly dead there. Just to the left-hand side of the pit of oblivion. I think they're done for. Yes, the count out has begun. Orby Blade spinning successfully and in victory. That's a shame for Team Monsoon, but they are officially out of LEGO Wars. Six. And Orby go through. Well, it's a shame that Monsoon Spinner died as quickly as it did there because that did have potential to be a very, very destructive battle. But it was around about here, I'd say, when Monsoon got hit on the front by Orby Spinner that the weapon stopped. And after that, they were an easy target for shots like that one, taking off one of the side panels and this one as well. And one well-timed shot saw Orby completely immobilizing Monsoon and going through to the next round. A clinical performance from Orby as they take out the weapon and drive batteries to take the first spot in the grand final. They will face the winner of our next fight between the 17th seed Shatterstar and a very lucky diabolical toothpick. Robot ears, stand by. Three, two, one. Activate. Shatterstar will start as the favourites here as they launch the centre of the arena and now coming in on the attack on Diabolical Toothpick bringing the hammer down on the claw of the veteran machine. Ranked 6th for the tournament is Shatterstar. They're also seeded 17th for the series overall. Diabolical Toothpick meanwhile ranked 11th for the bracket but they were very lucky in my opinion to beat Slamo in the last round the way they did. Meanwhile, Shatterstar fought tooth and nail with Chompy EX in a very, very close shot decision, but they won that fight. Diabolical Toothpick coming around to the side. They're trying to get those claw, or that claw of theirs, I should say, into the tracks of Shatterstar. Shatterstar, a little bit too well driven, though, for them and that point. Now bringing that, who's lifting, or oh, sorry, who's lifting, sorry, those front forks of theirs, I should say, underneath Diabolical Toothpick. And now going for the pit button. Didn't quite press the button on that attempt. Did on that one. Didn't manage to lower the pit, though. Finally, the pit goes down. Getting under the side of the Diabolical Toothpick now. Shatterstar bringing the hammer down again. The hammer's been a very effective weapon throughout this series of LEGO Wars. Hammers aren't usually the most destructive weapons, but they're very aggressive, and they are very good at getting KOs if they hit robots in the right place. Oh, goodness me. Shatterstar nearly threw himself down the pit there. Diabolical Toothpick actually won their last fight because Slammer threw themselves pretty much into the pit. And they nearly got through thanks to that stroke of luck once again. Shatterstar under the front of Diabolical Toothpick. Diabolical Toothpick bringing the claw down. Not really doing much damage. No more of a scratch there than anything else. It's mainly because they can't get underneath Shatterstar to get that claw really into anything important. Is Shatterstar okay though? Not really too much movement from those tracks at the moment. A little bit of a stalemate here in the centre of the arena. Both robots haven't really been overly aggressive towards each other, almost leaving each other out, but now Diabolical Toothpick on the verge of the Pit of Oblivion, and down. Six. Well, Shatterstar, not the, uh, I'd say, not the most charismatic of victories, but a victory nonetheless. 
That battle never really did get into gear for some reason. Shatterstar were by far the more aggressive, I'd say, and they had the more effective weapon throughout as well. Diabolical Tutu just couldn't seem to get a hold of Shatterstar in that fight. Shatterstar bringing the hammer down several times and eventually using much better driving and superior pushing power to get Diabolical Toothpick into the pit despite nearly going down themselves. They were able to bring it back and win. The luck finally runs out for Toothpick as their campaign ends down the pit, meaning Shatterstar will face Orbi in next week's final. We'll shuffle up to Quadrant 2 now and it's the Rookies Cup winners cracking up against Kato Nemoidia. Robot is stand by. 3, 2, 1. Activate. So a veteran versus a newcomer, Katana Moidi at the pink machine with the big axe and the googly eyes versus Kraken, the machine with the deadly spinner on the lowering arm. The newcomers, but the winners of the Rookies Cup, favourite to do well here, ranked seventh for the bracket. Katana Moidi, meanwhile, despite their seeding of seeded 23rd, they're only ranked 23rd. So they are the lower ranked machine here, bringing that axe down and getting it right into the spinner of Kraken. They've lost their back panel, no surprises there. Then something else has come off there, and one of the side panels has come loose as well. Down comes Kraken's spinner on that lowering arm, and I think the spinner has once again stopped. Yes, it has. They too, much like Monsoon, we saw earlier on in this episode, have managed to struggle with their spinner throughout. However, unlike Monsoon, they have got good pushing power, and they have got a good Design on the machine, although they are taking damage at the moment from Catanamoidia, but Catanamoidia's front scoop has been bent out of shape, look! And that means now they're going to struggle getting underneath Kraken, Kraken able to get around the side of Catanamoidia and bring that hammer down once again, I'll say hammer, bring the arm down once again. Kata are in all sorts of problems here, they're missing a side panel, another one's come loose as well, they've taken horrendous damage throughout this, and Kraken now using that arm of theirs almost like a grabbing arm, look! Grabbing a hold of Kato Nemoidia and controlling them around the arena. That's good driving there by Kraken. Using his design well. Yes, their main weapon may be broken, but they are still able to control the fight. They're still able to do all the main work here. It's also quite an aggressive weapon of theirs as well, that arm, because whilst it doesn't do much damage, it at least scores aggression points. Kato Nemoidia now being pushed towards the screws. That's good driving again by Kraken. They used this tactic against Waddle Dee Meta in the last round. And had they left Model D Meta alone, Wall D would have been counted out. However, they kept bumping into them, freeing them eventually, and getting a judge's win. Catanimordia are once again, much like Muff Model D was in the last round, have been pinned in there by the screws. I think Kraken are trying to be good sports and release them here, but I don't think it's going to work. Catanimordia, no, they're being counted out. They are true, well and truly pinned in there by the screws. And that is a very, very impressive win from Kraken. Despite losing the weapon early on, they were Six. able to overcome the odds, outmaneuver their opponent, use good aggression and control, and get a very convincing win. Well done. That's what LEGO Wars is all about, in my opinion. Two very different, interesting machines, giving it a good go. Kraken did take damage throughout, courtesy of the hammer of Kato Nemoidia, but Kato Nemoidia's side panels kept failing them. Yes, Kraken's weapon failed it, but thanks to that weapon armor theirs, they were still able to use good control and aggression to get Katanimordia into the screws and get it pinned off the ground. And because of that, Katanimordia were counted out and Kraken are through to the grand final. Very impressive. Kraken once again takes advantage of the screws to hook Kato and send them packing for this series. Next up, it's the lowest robot left running switchback against Bricker Brother. Robot is stand by. Free. Two, one, activate. Ooh, very quick and smooth sight there for Switchback, and Bricker Brother saw it coming, using that stronger rear of theirs as a deflection for the spinner. Didn't quite work out for them, though, as they get hit by that egg beater spinner. This should be a good battle here. We can expect high things from these two machines after they performed exceptionally well in the last round. Switchback, don't forget, took out the very impressive and highly fancied number two ranked and third seed Petunia. Meanwhile, Brick and Brother took out Mr. Waffle in about 10 seconds after flipping them over immediately. So very, very high stakes here. Very, very impressive machines. It's a shame they both had to meet this early, to be honest. They both could be grand finalists in their own right, but at last, that is how the LEGO Wars bracket works sometimes. Switchback trying to bring that egg beat spinner into Bricker Brothers, switchback ranked 32nd, don't forget, they had to fight to get here through the play-ins, meanwhile Bricker Brothers didn't have to do that, they were ranked 18th overall, not the highest but not the lowest ranking either of this tournament, switchback bringing that egg beater spinner down, 
an interesting weapon now on Switchback. Not only can it cause damage with the spinner, but it can also lift robots using those lifting prongs. And we haven't really seen that, actually, this series of LEGO Wars. Is Brick Brother okay? Yes, it is. Oh, for a minute there, it's a little bit stale, but it is okay. The pit bike has been pressed. They must be confident they can get Switchback down the pit. Switchback's lost one of its wheels. Look! You can see that rear wheel just poking out the bottom of the machine there. That has been a recurring issue with Switchback this series. Can Brick Brother capitalise on that? Or is Switchback still okay? Because despite losing one wheel, it has still got the other three. And it has still got pretty good pushing power. As it's proving right now, pushing Brick Brother towards the screws, Brick Brother are struggling a little bit here. I'm wondering if they've got some control problems. They aren't moving as smoothly or as fluently as they usually do. And they are being pushed back here once again by Switchback. Are we going to finally see those lifting prongs come into play? I don't think so. You can see that wheel that came off there behind Switchback. Every now and again, it just sort of pokes itself out into view. Being pushed back again now, Brick and Brother into the screw. Switch back, trying to bring that egg beater spinner into play. Not really causing much damage at the moment. But then again, Brick and Brother is a very, very solid machine and a very well built machine. Good push there once again by Switch back. Underneath Brick and Brother, but didn't take advantage of it. That side panel has also come loose. So there's been some damage under Switch back there. Not too sure if that counts towards weapon effectiveness of Brick and Brother or not. Brick and Brother are in trouble here, though. They're not moving smoothly, they're not moving fluently, and if they don't keep moving properly, we could very well see them being counted out here. And a bit of an upset, Brick and Brother, veterans of LEGO Wars, they've always performed relatively well. They've never failed to make it out of a heat, in fact. But, as far as I'm concerned, Switchback are currently on top, and yes, look, they're being counted out! Brick and Brother, they may be fidgeting, they may be moving ever so slightly, but it's not enough to be considered full mobility, and Six. they've been counted out. That's a huge surprise, in my opinion. Switchback going through to the grand final. Bit of a Cinderella story here for Switchback. Had to fight through the planes to get this far, yet they're through to the grand final, and Brick and Brother, a robot that many people fancied, are now out. I'm not too sure what happened to Brick and Brother there, to be honest. They were fluid moving throughout, they had good weaponry, they were well on top in my opinion. But Switchback just kept on coming in with push after push. And I think they must have drained the batteries or something because Brick and Brother died. Strange. Definitely one for the purists as Switchback smothers Bricker to end their charge for another year. We'll jump across to the other side of the bracket in Quadrant 1 with our second old BattleBots bout tonight between the top rank Quantum and the Ape Seeds Tantrum. Robot is stand by. Free. Two, one, activate. Not sure who the favorite is here. Quantum is the highest ranked machine, but Tantrum is the highest seeded machine of these two. Oh, look there! At the front wedge of Quantum being torn completely away by that big spinner of Tantrum. That was a fantastic start there for the former BattleBots champions. And again, coming in, look there at the damage under Quantum. That's horrendous damage. Bits and pieces of Quantum flying all over the arena. Ranked first for the bracket, don't forget, but I'll tell you what, they were a little bit lucky to get this far as far as I'm concerned. Mingo had their number in the last round and only lost because they threw themselves down the pit. Quantum have a lot to prove here. Meanwhile, Tantrum defeated Tin on the very convincing judge's decision. Ranked 16th with seed 8th overall. Remember, they made it to the top 8 last year and the way they're going right now, I can see them making the top 8 again this year. Quantum are in all sorts of problems, have to regain their bearings and try and come back strongly. Ah, oh, the Shreem has been ripped away as well. Quantum have been absolutely massacred here. Well, I wasn't expecting this kind of damage to the number one ranked machine, I must be honest, but I tell you what, I'm all for it. Tantra have been absolutely terrific in this fight. That spinner of theirs is certainly frightening. Quantum trying to cower away in the corner, almost as if they don't quite really know what to do with themselves getting caught on bits of their own bodywork as well and now nearly throwing themselves down the pit. I thought for a minute that they'd given up, but they backed away. Tantrum are waiting for them though, bringing that spinner in, doing more damage to the claw. Quantum now stuck on the edge of the pit of oblivion. Can they get away from there? I don't think so. There's only a matter of time until Tantrum dumps them down the pit or maybe, just maybe, they might be feeling a little bit merciful and just leaving it to be counted out. Because they're not moving, are they? That does count as a, mo a mobility. Yes, they are being counted out. What a stunner this is. Quantum, the number one ranked robot for this bracket, have just been massacred. Six. And Tantrum make it to another grand final. Fantastic work there by Tantrum, just not giving Quantum any room to breathe. Tearing off bits and pieces left, right and centre. The front scoop was massacred. The side of the robot was taken apart as well and exposed. 
The stream was ripped away. That was some of the best damage we've seen Tantrum do this series, in my opinion. Quantum is a very sturdily built robot, and it got absolutely pulled apart there. And by the end of it, it was a merciful end for Quantum, really, as it was left on the side of the pit and counted out. A dominant display from the punching boy as the top ranked Quantum is dumped out of the competition. They'll have to deal with some sort of flipping bot in the quarterfinals, though, as next up it's Whiplash against Pegasus. Robot is stand by. Three, two, one, activate. In my opinion, this has potential to become a battle of the series, and it's already a good start for Pegasus immediately flipping Whiplash over, but Whiplash writing itself almost as quick as it was flipped over there. Another little flick there from Pegasus wasn't quite able to flip Whiplash over on that occasion, though. Both these machines, don't forget, are rookies for this series of LEGO Wars, but despite that, they managed to get quite high rankings with this bracket. Pegasus ranked 8th, Whiplash ranked 9th, so very, very close in the rankings, actually, as well. Very evenly matched, I guess you could say, because of that. Both machines have performed very well this series. Pegasus, I would say, probably had the more... I guess you could say the more dominant series run. Remember, they just they absolutely dominated Atlas in the last round, and they get underneath Whiplash here, pinning against the sidewall, but weren't able to flick it over on that occasion. Whiplash has that lifting arm, maybe P1 GTP in the last round and a very close up to the decision, but it won nonetheless. Now though, can they get underneath Pegasus? Have they met their match in Pegasus here? It is a very quick robot. One of Whiplash's strengths is that it can outmaneuver a lot of its opponents, but Whiplash isn't as quick as Pegasus, I don't think, so they might struggle with it here in this battle. Pegasus underneath them once again, for example, and flicking them against the sidewall. Good work there by Whiplash. They're using his lifting hand to push themselves away from the sidewall. Good battle this so far. I thought it would be. These two machines have performed exceptionally well this series. And it's, again, a shame to see them clash this early. Honestly, these two machines are rightfully grand finalists, in my opinion. Or grand final worthy machines. But one of them has to go. It's how LEGO Wars works. And at the moment, I would say Pegasus are just on top at the moment. They've certainly been in control more of this battle. They've been on the aggressive quite a lot as well. They've definitely been the more effective effort. Oh, Whiplash! Hitting the pin release button and very nearly throwing themselves down it. And it's only a matter of time. Surely, who no, is it? For a minute, that... Wait, what? It, did that count? I don't think... It, did that count? If that pit if that pit had lowered the way it should have been, that would have been over and done with. I'm not too sure. Well, the judges have to intervene here. I'm not too sure. Well, well they're, they're happy for the fight to continue. Seems to be. The fight is continuing, so Whiplash, a little bit of a lucky break there for them. Pegasus will be frustrated about that. As far oh, and another good flip there from Pegasus! And surely now it's not over! Whiplash writing themselves! Well, once again, if the pit had lowered properly there, Whiplash would have been down and out. I'm not too sure. Controversy raining there on LEGO Wars. Pegasus might not be too happy with that. The judges might have to intervene later on, but right now this battle is continuing. Not too sure what's going on out there really now. Pegasus being lifted up there by Whiplash. Pegasus for me though by far on top at this point in the battle. And another good flick there on Whiplash. Whiplash are struggling now. As this battle progresses, Pegasus gets stronger and stronger and Whiplash gets weaker and weaker. And as far as I'm concerned, Whiplash are by far behind now. We're into the final six seconds. They're going to have to do something major to get a bit of victory here because as far as I'm concerned, this is Pegasus' fight. Six. She's called. It goes to the judges. Mm, lots of controversial moments in that battle, though. Not too sure what the judges are going to say about it, to be honest. Pegasus certainly started the stronger of the two machines. Whiplash up and over. But fair play to Whiplash. Their streaming did work very effectively throughout the fight. They were capable of getting themselves out of danger as well. But for me personally, the aggression and the control and the weapon effectiveness from Pegasus absolutely trumped everything Whiplash did. Not mentioning, of course, the pit situation. There were two times there where I think Whiplash could have been pitted quite easily and it was lucky that the pit didn't lower properly. But let's see what the judges think. Good fight, though. And the winner by unanimous decision is... Pegasus! A rare JD win for Pegasus ensures a second external robot in the grand final as we say goodbye to Whiplash this year after an impressive rookie year. There's only one quadrant we haven't visited yet tonight, so let's go down to number 4 and we have a rematch from the heats between 23 Red and Block Lobster. When they fought in Heat D, Block Lobster was carrying damage from a previous fight which the 7th Seeds took full advantage of and disabled both sides of drive on the Lobster. With both robots at full fitness and a berth in the grand final at stake, let's see who will make it out on top this time. Robot is stand by. 3, 2, 1, 
Activate. Bit of a grudge match here. These two robots met in the heat and 23 had absolutely mullered Block Lobster in a very convincing KO victory. So Block Lobster will want to try their hardest to gain some Benjamin. They never got this far in a tournament before. They have never made it as far as the round of 16. Oh, and the eyes go sent flying there by 33 Red. Those flywheels are truly devastating weapons. Although I'm pretty certain those eyes on Block Lobster are just for show. So they should still be okay for the moment. But 23 Red would now be doing some of the most destructive damage to opponents in LEGO Wars history. Remember, they just managed to defeat Panic Attack as well in the last round. The highly fancy and highly favoured Panic Attack, Legends of LEGO Wars, out in the round of 32 because of this dual disced green mean machine. But don't count Block Lobster out. Block Lobster may have lost them in the heat, but they have caused some upsets as they go for the pit release button there. They defeated Duck in the last round, and they were ranked fourth for the bracket, and they're former international champions. Oh, look there, though, at the damage under the flipper of Block Lobster. Completely split down the middle, and that will mean now they're going to struggle a lot more to get underneath 23 Red, but 23 Red being pushed into the side wall here by Block Lobster. Look at this by Block Lobster, using those uh, sort of wedge claws as, as like almost like guiders, I guess you could say. They're sort of grab a hold of, of their opponent and then sort of guide them around the arena using that's fantastic stuff. Oh, more damage under the flipper there though, courtesy of that spinner of 23 Red. 23 Red slowly but surely disemboweling and pulling apart bits and pieces of Block Lobster. Block Lobster raising their flipper high. I think they've realised that the best tactic they can have against, Block, against 23 Red, sorry, is to use those claws as a sort of like I said, robot controllers in a way, although they have managed to use that flipper as an effective wedge as well. This battle, I tell you what, I'll be honest, I thought 23 were going to make light work of Block Lobster like they did in the heats, but I tell you what, Block Lobster have learned from that past battle and have really brought the fight to 23 Red here. And this is a terrific battle. Look at this, great work there again by Block Lobster, managing to stop the spinner of 23 Red. 23 Red, they're backing away, managing to get that spinner back up to speed. They will want to cause severe damage to that flipper. They've done a lot of damage to it already. And I think another good couple of hits like that one, for example. And we could see that flipper coming clean off. And that will be a huge feather in the cap for 23. And if it goes to the judges, Block Lobster underneath, pushing them towards the screws now. But the screws aren't able to snag anything on Block Lobster just yet. Not Block Lobster, 23 Red, sorry, just yet. This is how front of the action is. I'm falling over my own words. Block Lobster now underneath 23 Red again. Wasn't able to capitalise on it on that attempt. Underneath them again here. Can they get that flipper in and use it? Yes, they can. Lifting 23 Red up into the air. Can they get a flip? Can they flip it? I don't think they're going to. No. Three seconds left. This is going to go to the judges. Six. What a battle that was. And fair play to Block Lobster. They gave 23 Red one of the best fights of its campaign this series. That was a good fight. Brilliant stuff. Fantastic work there by Block Lobster as far as I'm concerned. Yes, I do think 23 Red might be coming out of this one with its arm raised. But you've got to give credit to the awesome machine that is Block Lobster. They overcame the odds there as far as I'm concerned by surviving to the very end. And even giving 23 Red some very scary moments like this, for example. Driving it into the side wall. They took some serious damage to their flipper, yet it was still capable of doing some lifting later on. 23 red for me, definitely the more destructive machine though, and I think I've just nabbed this one to be honest. And the winner by split decision is... 23 red! With 23 red edging a nail-biting decision, just one spot remains in next week's grand final. It's two kings of the arena left to fight it out. This isn't the first encounter between Wobber and King B after they fought in the second wars with victory going to the veteran lifter. The defending champs have already exacted revenge on Zoidy from that same heat in this year's All-Star, so let's see if they can double up on the rematch wins for that last spot in the final. Robot is stand by. Three, two, one. Activate. All very quick start there from Agar Wobber, but they managed to get themselves caught on the lifting forks of King B Cube and King B Cube taking advantage. And Agar Wobber are now in the right pickle, being slammed into the arena side wall and now driven into the corner as well. That was terrible control there from the reigning champions. Off comes their face. That won't bother them too much, I'm sure. Down goes the pit courtesy of King B Cube, who are now climbing over Agar Wobber. Okay, fair enough. I didn't realize King B Cube was a monster truck, but hey. There we go. I'm learning something new every single day. Can Agobar bring that hammer down onto the top of King BQ? Yes, it can. And it's split it right down the middle there. You saw that. Look at that. That top panel now has been caved in. 
Agarov, and despite being the reigning champions, ranked very low, just 28th. They made up for that in the last round by kicking Deator's teeth in, but they are struggling here against King B Cube, who have pinned them into the arena side wall. King B Cube, of course, ranked 21st with the brackets, who is highly ranked over Agarov, but Agarov will still be the favourites because of its champion status. King B Cube hasn't really been a high performer in recent months or recent years, I should say, of LEGO Wars. So to see it doing well this time around is fantastic stuff. Another great attack there by King B Cube. The pit is yawning open and we could be seeing a huge upset here. And we are. Six. Agrobo down the pit and King B Cubed through. And just like that, the reigning champions, the number one seeds, Agrobo are out. What a surprise. King B Cubed, though, you got to give them 100% credit. Yes, they took damage on the hammer, but it didn't phase them too much. And they used great driving and great weapon work to keep that hammer of Agrobo's at bay, outmaneuver it, snag it on the forks, and then drive it into the open abyss. Well done, King B Cubed. What an upset. And despite a spirited performance, the defending champs Agrawarba are out as King B Cube takes the last spot in the grand final. It's been another brilliant night in the arena as more favourites have fallen to leave us with an unlikely final eight. The angry orange boy whose powerful punch has smashed through the top ranked machine. The maverick flipper that's tossed just about everything in its path. The Rookies Cup winners determined to double up their trophy haul for 2023. The underdog playing winners still hanging in there and raring to cause more upsets. The veteran expert making amends for falling at this hurdle last year with a string of brilliant drives. The new horizontal on the block with one hand firmly on this year's most destructive award. The dual disc spinner who's now odds on to take the title. And finally the old lifter who slayed the defending champions giving it one last roll of the dice before retirement. All of these robots have a claim for the Series 4 title, but only one can take it, so join us next week to find out who our new LEGO Wars Series Champions will be! Dun, 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 My dog is dead! <laughs>